One of the greatest heroes of Greek mythology is Perseus. The constellation of Perseus follows the constellation Cassiopeia in the sky. It's perhaps best known for the spectacular Perseid meteor shower, which peaks each year in mid-August. This meteor shower occurs when the Earth moves through debris left by comet Swift-Tuttle. When bits of this comet fall to Earth, they can be seen as shooting stars or meteors. Most of these meteors appear to approach from the area of the sky of Perseus, which is where this meteor shower gets its name. Perseus was a son of the god Zeus. His grandfather, Acrisius, was king of Argos. Acrisius was without a son, and he asked an oracle if he would ever have one. The oracle said that Acrisius would never have a son, but he would be killed by the son of his daughter, Danae. Determined to avoid such a fate, Acrisius imprisoned Danae. Danae prayed to Zeus for aid, and in response Zeus came to her and impregnated her. Danae bore a son, Perseus. Acrisius knew that to kill this child would invite the wrath of the gods. So the king put Danae and the newborn Perseus into a tiny boat and set them out to sea, declaring that fate would decide their destiny. The god of the sea, Poseidon, was Zeus's brother, and didn't want to see his nephew drown, so he guided Danae and Perseus to safety. The two washed ashore at Seraphos and were taken in by a fisherman named Dictus. Dictus took good care of Danae and raised Perseus as his own son, and Perseus grew up to be a strong, brave, and loyal man. Although Dictus was a humble fisherman, his brother Polydectes was king of the island. After Perseus was grown, Polydectes decided that he wanted to marry Danae. Perseus did not approve of Polydectes, and so the king schemed to get Perseus out of the way. Polydectes held a banquet, and declared that all invitees had to bring him a horse as tribute. Being the adopted son of a fisherman, Perseus had no means of procuring a horse. Polydectes decreed that in lieu of a horse, Perseus must undertake a quest to slay and retrieve the head of Medusa, who turned anyone who looked at her to stone. Polydectes was certain that Perseus would perish in attempting this feat. But Perseus was a son of Zeus and was favored by the gods. When Perseus prayed for help, the gods responded by giving him the tools he needed to defeat Medusa. Two of these were the most important. His father Zeus gave Perseus a magically sharp and strong sword, and his sister Athena gave Perseus a shield that was so well polished that it acted as a mirror. With these in hand, Perseus set out to find Medusa. Medusa lived near a beach. Perseus knew that he was getting close because of all the statues around, people who Medusa had turned to stone. Perseus took his shield, and instead of looking straight ahead, he found his way using the reflection in his shield. Soon enough, he saw the reflection of Medusa. But because he only saw her reflection, he avoided petrification. With one swift stroke of his sword, Perseus decapitated Medusa. He took her head, and without looking at it, put it into a sack. Medusa was a magical being. When Medusa's blood mixed with the sea foam, out from it sprang a magnificent winged horse, Pegasus. Perseus mounted Pegasus, and the two of them flew away. On his way home, Perseus saw a beautiful young woman chained to a rock by the sea, the Princess Andromeda. Perseus quickly found King Cepheus and Queen Cassiopeia, Andromeda's parents, who explained the situation to him, that Andromeda was to be sacrificed to the sea monster Cetus. Perseus asked if, should he defeat the sea monster, he could ask Andromeda for her hand in marriage. Cepheus and Cassiopeia quickly agreed. Perseus flew Pegasus in front of the sea monster's face and took Medusa's head out of the bag and turned the sea monster to stone. And so Perseus and Andromeda were married. After that, Perseus quickly returned home. Using Medusa's head, Perseus slew Polydectes and installed Dictus as king of Seraphos. Perseus returned to Andromeda, and the two of them founded their own kingdom and lived happily ever after. And 
What of Perseus' grandfather, Acrisius, who was prophesied to be slain by Perseus? He lived to old age. But while spectating at a sporting event, he was hit in the head by a stray discus and was killed. That discus was thrown by none other than Perseus. <laughs>